Boston Bros is number one thing not. You're dead wrong. You can catch me doing Miss McKinney with my prodders on. It's real boxing talk every time we meet with Ned, the TBE, and Conspiracy G. We bring it to you raw, on bias. You know the deal. You can even get a poor dealie here from Dollar Bill with my guys by my side. You know we going live. All we need you to do is please like and subscribe. Boxing Bros. Peace. You are now tuned into the Boxing Bros. I would like to take the time to shout out the homie Big Mo. This is the Big Mo merch. So if you like this shirt, he has it in hoodies. He has it in tees. See, this is the long sleeve because it's, you know, it's kind of cold here in Boston, Mass. But if you like this shirt, you can find it at Big Mo's Instagram account. You can find Big Mo at Real Sports Mojo uh, on Instagram and on YouTube. And you can purchase this shirt. I'm Caden. And I'm here with my co-host. What's going on, everybody? This is Trill Dollar Bill. This is Slippery G. <laughs> he sleep. Wake his. Wake yeah, him so up. Wake him up. Coming back in part two, the TBE. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and so what we're doing today is we're rating Tio Fimo Lopez. We are rating the undisputed. Lightweight champion, unless you feel like the two-time email champion, Devin Haney, is the rightful WBC champ. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it over to Ned the TBE. Uh, what do you rate Teofimo Lopez power? I rated it in 92, and the guy has some pop on him. You know, you saw, like, he's nobody you want to just stand in front of, and he's, like, not the type to, like, get out your way, so... Tio got that pop on him. All right. I'm turning it over to Kaspera G, Slippery G for now. Slippery G, uh, what do you rate Tio Fimo Lopez power? Slide uh, with him. Slide with him. <laughs> Slide with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, for, uh, for power, I, I gave Tio Fimo 95, you know, and the reason why is because uh, during that Loma fight, remember, Lomachenko is a pressure fighter, but against Lopez, he stayed on that back foot for the majority of the fight. And I think it's because he didn't want to taste that power. And, you know, T.O. got a great straight right. It dropped several opponents. And he got a nice right hook with some pop, too. So, 95 for power. All right. Trill Dollar Bill, what do you rate T.O. Fimo Lopez power? Um, I second that, G. I second that. Uh, I give him a 95 also. It's it's. it's he got some pop. The boy got some pop. He got that Roberto Duran power. You know, 16 and over, 12 KOs. Uh, and, you know, he, what I seen him do to uh, Richie Comey was was crazy, you know? So, um, shout out to uh, Theofimo Lopez. He definitely got some pop. All right. So, my rating for Teofimo Lopez and his power, which I am shocked that I am giving him the highest score, but not by much. It's a 96. Uh, the reason why I rate him a 96 is because he has a 75% KO ratio, uh, but he's also been in there with elite fighters already. And you look at the way he dispatched of uh, Richard Comey, and you look at how he got respect from Vasily Lomachenko. Like, Vasily Lomachenko has been in there with the Axeman, Nicholas Walters, been in there with Reagan now, been in there with Jorge Lenores, who even uh, dropped him. He's been in there with hitters. But he's never shown the type of respect that he's shown for Teofimo Lopez. I think that was a combination of speed and power. But I think his pop is serious. And I think that uh, Vasily Lomachenko knew, don't want to get caught by this guy because it might end up like Comey. So I give him a 96 for power. Uh, Ned, the TBE, uh, what do you give uh, Teofimo Lopez for speed? I give him 91. He's, he doesn't have the fastest hands in the division, but I think in – that division, everybody has fast hands, and it's at least be for for Teal. G on ice. Uh, what did you give uh, my man Teal Fimo Lopez for speed? Um, I actually agree with what Ned's saying, but I gave him a ninety. Um, he still has elite uh, level speed, but in that division, he's not necessarily the fastest. During that Comey fight, Comey was actually beating him to the jab. You know, but I think what makes up for his speed is actually he's great at timing and his counters. And so uh, when it comes to his counter hitting, he's pretty fast. But when it comes to like the jab, 
it's, it's like average in that division. So 90 for speed. All right. Trill Nostradamus, what did you give him for uh, speed? I gave him a 90 for speed also. Um, damn, everything that G says. But I do think that he is <clears throat> sneaky fast. Mm-hmm. I do think he has some um, some speed in there. Uh, he is elite level fast, like uh, G said. And when he counters, oh, man, he counters so fast. His timing with his – oh, my goodness. His counters – um, it'll put you to sleep before you know it, you know? <laughs> so definitely, um, I, I'm giving him a 90. Shout out to uh, Dion Limo. So I'll just put my score and then I'll explain it. And I've done this before. So if you've seen us do the ratings before, you know how I decide speed. But speed, I gave him a 96. Um, the way I judge speed is not necessarily about how fast your hands look but your reaction time from when there's an opening to you being able to hit the target. Um, and so all I know is like Trill pointed out, the counters always there. Um, with Vasily Lomachenko, a guy with great speed, he was beating him to the punch. Um, so for me, speed is reaction time. Like as soon as you see the target, can you hit it? How long does it take you to hit the target, hit the target? Like, whereas you see some fighters who have really fast hands, but they have a hard time connecting with the target. Um, so, my, I, I, I uh, mix hand speed with um, reaction time. So I think like his hand speed is probably at like a 91, but his reaction time increases it to like 96 for me, like his speed, because like, I feel like he reacts a lot faster than like his hands. So like, that's why you see him beating someone like Vasily Lomachenko to the punch. So I gave him 96. All right. Um, stamina. Ned, what do you give Tiago Lopez for stamina? Uh, I give him a ninety-seven. He he doesn't get he he fought Loma. He went twelve. Even though I feel that's that's for the next uh next category, I'll say that I'll say why I gave him this. But even though I feel like it, he hasn't really like Loma's is, was his toughest opponent, and after this, he's put himself as the top target in his division. So it's exciting to see what he really has in his tank and how far he can really go against these other competitors. All right. Slippery G. Yeah. For um, stamina, I give him a 95. Uh, he doesn't really show signs of fatigue, but he only went the distance like three times. You know what I mean? So um, it's not like I have much to, to analyze. You know what I mean? So yeah, 95 for stamina. Trill dollar bill. I gave him a hundred on stamina. I've never seen him tired. Even when he went 12 rounds, he's still able to do backflips and celebrate and dance in the ring. Um, even on one of the the, the 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 times he went to the decision when there was a lot of stuff going on, I guess, uh, what was the guy's name? The the, the Asian fella. I can't remember his name, but I'm, I know exactly the fight you're talking yeah. about. But that guy ended up being a real deal. But people were saying, oh, you went to distance with him, and this guy ended up knock, uh, knocking out um, Felix. But hey, he just ended up knocking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just ended up knocking him out. But they was giving um uh Felix Ray holds the definition of knock yourself out. Felix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, um, but yeah, um he went to uh the fight with him when he went to distance with him, and there was a lot of stuff going on in um, you know, in his personal life with in his family, where you know, um but like even mom, in that fight, yeah, his mom yeah. didn't approve of him marrying, marrying his yeah, yeah. wife, and he was mm-hmm. having issues with that, yeah. Even in that fight, when he went to the distance, you could say you could tell his focus wasn't there, but he still was in shape and still was in tight and still went to 12 rounds. So I got to give him a uh, hundred on stamina. All right. I gave him a 98 on stamina. So I agree with uh, everything Trill said. The one thing I would just add is. He went 12 rounds with Vasily Lomachenko, who was recognized by a lot of people as the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. So I don't need to see him go 12 with a bunch of other people who aren't as good as Vasily Lomachenko. And also in that fight with Vasily Lomachenko, their game plan was for him to gas out and he never did. So that's why uh, Vasily Lomachenko had to take some risk. And it was because 
the strategy of, oh, this big guy will bake for 135 is just going to gas out, didn't work. So Vasily had to take some risks. However, there were times in that fight where it looked like Tio, you know, was a little winded. But for me, the way he answered in that 12 round showed me that he's championship caliber and that his tank was good enough to close the show and secure the win. So for that reason, I gave him a 98. Oh, Ned, the TBE, what do you give Teofimo Lopez for a chin? I give him a 95, and that's because in the fight with Loma, even though Loma started late, when he did turn up on him, uh, you saw he could have taken T- uh, Teofimo out. So How do you think right? he could have taken Teofimo out? Have, There's my white flag in. You say, <laughs> that, you say that all the time, Mike. Yeah, I've I mean, never seen him buckle at all. I've never seen him hurt at all. In that. No, my thing is, if you could have take, taken someone out, you, know, you, you would have. I get you. I hate, like, I hate that. I like, say, it looked like. I didn't say he could have. It looked like. like and I raced someone and I beat him. Or, you know what I'm saying? You beat. Oh, they're like, oh, I could have won if I wanted to. Like, then why didn't you want to win? Like, All right, so it looked like he could have won. I, I mean, I didn't say it shouldn't like per se. It looked like he, um, Tia was on his way out, but he he whiffed, he, whiffed, he withstood those punches. I'm with you. I saw, I saw what you saw. I know what, I know what round you're talking about. Not off the cuff, but there was that round where I was very worried for yeah. Tio. But oh, the, say, the eighth round when um, yeah. when he was getting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought I thought I thought, I thought, I thought, he, was Loma, I thought he was taking a breather yeah, that break. I thought Loma was gonna put his foot on the gas the rest of the fight after that. Like once he saw that um vulnerability from Tio, but he didn't. So you know, sometimes I think he uh, well, this is not by Loma, but Loma's just smart, uh, just too smart for his own good, you know. Like his IQ was too high that it shoots him in the foot sometimes. So all right, so you gave uh T.O. 95 for uh, all right. Spirit G, what'd you give him? I actually also gave him a 95 for Chen, but for different reasons. Um, During that Lomachenko fight, y'all understand, Loma got good speed and power. Loma hurt Gary Russell Jr., Linares, and Campbell. But during that fight with T.O. Fimo, every shot he landed, T.O. ate all of them shots. And even in that eighth round, I think what Ned's talking about, like, it wasn't like, you know, I was like, oh, T.O.'s about to get out of there. It was a little bit like he was just taking off that round to 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 activate in the later rounds because he knew he had to be in deep waters with uh, Lomachenko. So his chin held up, man. So 95 for chin. All right, Trill Dollar Bill. Yeah, I second with G. So everything he said was dope. Um, but I gave him 100, though. You know what I'm saying? I gave him 100 for that because I can't – I'm not going to punish him. He took – I seen – it's not he took some shots with with, with Comey. Nothing, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then let's see with Loma. Loma has this thing of breaking down fighters. Some shots, like G was saying, some shots that he hit him with in the eighth round, it would have broke down any other fighter. Like I thought he was taking the round off myself too in the eighth round, going through the motions. You know what I'm saying? But I think he showed elite level chin against um and Sometimes when he trading with people, he done got caught before flush on the shot. This kid hasn't budged yet. Um, yeah. Even with Lil Machenko, he was he took shots. I didn't see him his legs buckle one time or seem like he needed to go back or or anything like that. Um, this kid so far he has showed a hundred percent chin to me. All right, so uh this is what, what I gave him for the chin. Ninety-eight. So, what I will say is, I agree with a lot of what Trill said, but that eighth round did have me scared. <laughs> I was a bit worried for him. I don't know if he was taking a round off. I don't know, and I do know the fight swung on that eighth round as well because um, Vasily Lomachenko went on to win a series of rounds. So, um, I didn't notice anything that made me weary, like Ryan Garcia getting dropped by uh, Luke Campbell. But um, I did see enough to make me say, hey, man, is T.O. right in there? So I'm just deducting two points for that eighth round. Other than that, you know, I've never I've never worried about him in all his pro fights. Just a quick two-point deduction for giving me those worries in that uh, eighth round. But other than that, his chin is pretty uh, solid. <laughs> so uh, I give him a 98. Um, footwork for Teofimo Lopez. Ned, what would you give him? 
I give him a ninety two. Like he has solid footwork. It's not. It's it's not the like I like I, I when I went uh, like I, I like Teofimo. He surprised me. I picked him to lose that in against Loma. And when we made a video, who was the first to lose in this division? I picked Teo. And you know, I didn't I, I, I he was he was the least he was the least he had the least potential of all the guys in that round, but he, he, he you know, <laughs> I'm just saying this. I don't, I, 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 I you make, you make me eat my words. Pages, <laughs> You're making me eat my words, CEO, man. So, but you, you, you got, you're young, you, you improve, you train hard. And I gave you a 92 for forward, but you know, it's, it's so much we got to see from this kid, yo. You know, he, he won his last fight was his biggest. It was a shot in the dark and he, he, he got it. He came out and he got it. So, you know. All right, Kaspira G. I completely disagree with Ned on this one, and this might be my most controversial score. So y'all might want to get y'all white flags. I actually give him a hundred for footwork. See, anytime you speak, I got a white flag. Yeah. Hey man, listen now. Walk with me though. So we don't need to. All right. <laughs> well, Hold on, maybe what you got? To do? <laughs> <laughs> it comes to footwork, right? Uh, T.O.'s footwork may not be the cutest, but is effective. You got to understand, he went up against a guy who is arguably has the best feet in boxing right now, Lomachenko. And what he do? He neutralized Lomachenko's footwork. Lomachenko's a southpaw who benefits off of angles. T.O. rarely allowed this guy to actually utilize angles during that fight. That's elite footwork. You know what I'm saying? So, again, it may look like hey, he looks kind of basic. But when it, against a guy who has the best feet in the division, best feet probably period right now, who who outsmarts guys with his Ukrainian dance moves, he couldn't do that with Teofimo. And because of that, I have to give that man credit. 100 for footwork. Okay, G. That was a solid argument. Hmm? Oh, so I'm joking. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Trill dollar bill. What you nah, think? No, that was that was a great argument. That was a great argument. But I give him a ninety-five. You know, I give him a ninety-five. And um, with everything that G said, especially in that little Machenko fight with somebody who was supposed to be one of the top Russian dancers. <laughs> you know, uh, what did we went to uh, the re- Ukrainian dance school, mm-hmm. right? And he was able to hang hang with him. So shout out to uh, to Fima Lopez. I give him a ninety five. All right, everybody, get your white flags ready, cause I gotta <laughs> keep it real. Ninety five, <laughs> ninety five for all the reasons that uh, G and Trill stated. I felt like as for someone who was in there with uh, Mister High Tech and all the fancy footwork that you see with Vasily Lomachenko. He wasn't able to switch angles on Tio Fimo Lopez like that. Tio Fimo Lopez was able to hang with him, make sure he couldn't control distance. Tio did a heck of a job. Now, there was a point in the fight where uh, Vasily Lomachenko did start to take the play away, start to get inside and start to do work. But again, Tio Fimo Lopez was able to um, adjust and neutralize it. I think uh, Tio Fimo Lopez showed that he has uh, A1 footwork. He has uh, elite level footwork. He showed a lot in that fight. And to me, 95 for sure. Um, I th- definitely better than Ryan Garcia's. So uh, <laughs> you know, I, I thought I thought he showed great footwork. Now, Ned, T V E, what do you give Teofimo Lopez for heart? And that boy got a hundred on heart, yo. You know, the way he talked, the way he moved, and you you see he, he went all the heavy hitters in that division. He wanna make he wanted to stake his claim. He wants to let everybody know, like, this the win against Loman wasn't a fluke, and he's ready to move on and fight whoever he got to. No matter if Bob Arum says he got to run it back three times with, with a no, no name guy, so all right, G. I also give him a um, 100 for heart. He literally took up the fight with Lomachenko. You know what I mean, and Lomachenko was the best in that division, like, he made the best look simple. And he took on that challenge. So you got to give that man credit. Hunting for heart. Trill dollar bill. You know he get a hundred from heart for me. You know what I'm saying? He getting a hundred from heart right off the rip. You know, he took the biggest test. Not only did he take the big, biggest test and pass the biggest test, he took the biggest test and passed the biggest test when everybody doubted him. 
everybody doubted him. They didn't give this kid a chance to, to beat the great Lowell Machenko, and he went out there and he showed that he can get the job done. So I give him 100% and heart because he believed in himself. <laughs> he ain't let public uh, perception, you know, persuade his goals. Yeah. You know, he knew what he was doing and he went out there and did it. So I gave him a hundred. Hmm. One hundred for me. I think um, for all the reasons that Trill stated. And then this for me, what solidified his heart as a one hundred is on my scorecard. If Vasily Lomachenko would have won the 12th round, it would have been a draw. And I felt like he knew it was close, despite what any scorecard may have said. He felt in his heart that this is a close fight, and I am not going to lose this 12th round. And he dug deep. Okay, go ahead, uh, Kasperi G. Just add, add, just, just a net add. Well, maybe not be a net add. His father even kept telling him during that fight he won every round. He's not even listening to his pops because he understood, like, nah, this is close. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to add that. Well, since you added that, I'll just add this. And Trill's uh, blindness for, for um, Julie Letterman in believing that Sandra <laughs> Bullock. <laughs> Gee, I mean, Trill's defending uh, Julie Letterman's scorecard. Everyone didn't see it like Julie. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, and I certainly was one who didn't see it like Julie. I thought it was on the line in the 12th round. And just the way he took that 12th round, that also showed heart. So I was like, yo. Got to uh, give my man Teofimo Lopez 100 for heart. So before we uh, talk about boxing IQ, I just want to explain to people who are new to the ratings, right? There are so many aspects of boxing that we could keep adding on this. Like we could add defense, right? Um, we can add so many things, but boxing IQ, like takes all that into account, like counters, defense, controlling distance, all that's in boxing IQ. Right. So if you think someone lacks in those areas, you deduct it from their boxing IQ, because in the end, defense is all about boxing IQ, distance, uh, pulling, countering. All those things are in boxing IQ. So if we gave all that stuff, different categories, we'd be here for a long time. So just boxing intellect. Uh, and, th and that's what's included in boxing IQ. So for those who are new to the ratings. Now, uh, boxing IQ for Teofimo Lopez, Ned the TVE. What did you give him? I gave him a 97. Yo, the way he, he landed, handled the best perfectly, like he he went in there and you know, he, him and his father trained. They 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 went in there, they they um broke down um Loma and then they went in there and used like that strategy properly. Now, I do want to see how he he he. They they go up against the guys in other division because this is still fresh. This is still new, and but the, that kid got a lot of um his IQ, his boxing IQ is very is is dope. It's dope. All right, slippery G. Um, I, I respect what they're saying, but I kind of disagree. I gave him a ninety four for boxing IQ. He has he's a great counter puncher. Um. Obviously, with his footwork, I gave him a hundred because he neutralized Lomachenko. So obviously, that goes also into um, IQ. And I'll say this: Loma is tricky and methodical in that ring, right? And so he frustrates a lot of fighters. He frustrated uh, Axeman Walters. He frustrated Rigandow, but Lomachenko couldn't frustrate Lopez. So that goes into the focus that Lopez had for that fight. But now this is where I have to deduct points. He has poor defense. Um, I have to be real. He, he keeps a really low guard when he's fighting. And because of that, Lomachenko um, started coming back in the second half of the fight because he kept landing shots to his face, you know. And unlike a Floyd Mayweather, Bernard Hopkins, or James Toney, that keeps that low guard, but they use their, their shoulder to prevent damage, Lopez doesn't necessarily uh, utilize that type of defense. So he has a low guard, he's getting hit in the face, but he comes back with counters. So in a way, it's kind of cool because it, it makes an entertaining fight. However, he takes unnecessary damage for me. And so for me, I kind of feel like, you know, um, he'll need to work on his defense more. Um, but outside of the defense, 
I would agree with Ned. So that's why I gave him a 95 for boxing IQ. Trills, what do you got? That was a tough 94, G. God. <laughs> um, now, um, but I'm with you, man. I give him a 95. I'm not going to rub him apart too much because I do realize it's only his 16th professional fight. Even though he's doing great things, this is only his 16th professional fight, and he's still learning and he's willing to learn. But so far, the kid has showed stellar, stellar IQ in there. He went up there and out chest the chess master in Lomachenko, so I'm giving him a 95. So I gave him a 96. And uh, the reason why I gave him a 96 is like uh, what Trill said. He went in there against Vasily Lomachenko, the man who everybody had number one pound for pound, high IQ, you know, is on another level, making great fighters quit. Like guys couldn't touch him. You got great fighters like Rigandau, the Axeman, Nicholas Walters. You had all these guys step in the ring with uh, Vasily Lomachenko, Gary Russell Jr. And they they didn't look as hot. They didn't look as good as they normally do. And then you look at Teofimo Lopez and what he was able to do and practically neutralize um, Vasily Lomachenko for uh, six rounds easy. Um, I think you got to give him credit for his boxing IQ. Um, I, get, I deducted some points mainly because uh, there were times in there where you saw Vasily Lomachenko exploit uh, certain mistakes from Teofimo Lopez, but in the end, it wasn't a, it wasn't a lot, and it wasn't enough. And for his first time at that level to look the way he did, uh, you know, that's a boxing prodigy at work. So I thought 96, and we're done rating Teofimo Lopez. Let's look at uh, the final. The final rating for Teofimo Lopez is a 96. A 96. Uh, Trill rates him a 96. G rates him a 96. Ned rates him a 95. And I rate him a 97. Pretty good rating for uh, Teofimo Lopez. And I think very accurate with uh, everyone. We're all within a point or two. So there you have it. That is Teo. Let Come us know on. how you fit. Let us know how you feel. Please like and subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We are the Boxing Bros.